My name is Sarah Woodbury. I'm here with my still sick husband, Dan, to talk today about Chepstow Castle. A little less sick this week, hopefully. Hopefully. So last week you talked about the march. I assume Chepstow plays a major role in the march. It does. So last week we talked about William Fitz Osborne, the Earl of Hereford. Starting in 1067, he began building Chepstow Castle um, as part of this mandate by William the Conqueror to conquer as much land as he could. Chepstow Castle is the oldest surviving post-Roman stone fortification in Britain. Wow. And in fact, the stones used um, in building the Great Hall came from Caerleon, which is a Roman fort that's nearby. The key aspect of Chepstow Castle is that it is located on the west bank of the River Wye, putting it in Wales. Chepstow Castle is built into the rock above the Wye River, essentially what is the, an outpost that last end of Wales with England right on the other bank. It can be fortified from England via the river. There's actually a balcony associated with it that some of my characters in one of my books jump off of to time travel. Its significance historically is that by being built on the western side of the Wye, it was a jumping off point for the further conquest of Wales. We actually have a bit of a record of that, historically from a book called The Chronicle of the Princes, which was written by Welsh monks. And they say, One year and 1090 was the year of Christ when Rhys, son of Tudor, king of South Wales, was killed by the French, French being Normans to the Welsh, who inhabited Brecheniog and then fell the kingdom of the Britons. Two months after that, about the Calends of July, the French came into David and Ceredigion, which they have still retained, and fortified the castles and seized upon all the land of the Britons. So at that point, did Chepstow lose its strategic importance? It actually didn't. It was still a very important seat in Wales. It was also like the last defense because here it is built right on the edge of Wales. One of the greatest lords of the 12th century, William Marshall, was actually the earl who controlled it and he ruled that entire region of South Wales all the way to Pembroke, which eventually became its own earldom. Another great lord was Roger Bigod in the 13th century, who further expanded the castle, ultimately to include four baileys, though the fourth, which is the outermost one, is no longer in existence because the wall is gone. He actually built a town wall around Chepstow as well, and such was his standing and the castle standing that King Edward himself came to visit in 1284 as part of his victory tour after his conquest of all of Wales. Next week, we're going to talk about Carew Castle, which was built by one of the lesser lords of Pembroke and has kind of an exciting history. If you like this video, click on the playlist or subscribe to my channel. There will be a new video next week. And if you want to check out my books, click on the link to my webpage.